Hi guys, I'm gonna be talking about vacuum splints today. So vacuum splints is another form of splinting that we utilize in a lot of the sports medicine realm, like athletic training uh, particularly. Um, vacuum splints are really, really nice because they can splint any extremity in any position and it'll stay there. They're really easy to apply, uh, they're easy to utilize, uh, a few downsides of them are they uh, can get kind of pricey. Uh, they're um, they are reusable, which is really nice. But a lot of time when you put a vacuum splint on a, a student athlete, for example, and you send them to the ER, uh, the number one thing that the ER is going to do is most likely just going to cut it off. And the downside of that is that now ruins that two hundred dollar splint that you have. Um, but more so if you have a good connection and relationship with your emergency staff, uh, physicians in the hospital, so forth, um, that can help you along the lines. I had a, one instance where I sent an athlete in a uh, vacuum splint and I told EMS, like for sure, don't cut it off. Uh, this is how you take it off really easy. And apparently they said the ER staff thought that was like the greatest thing ever. Because uh, a lot of people haven't seen these too often. Okay, so if I can flip my screen, I can't. Okay, so these are vacuum splints, okay? These are just, it's a, um, this version, okay, the Kramer version, just has a Velcro strap, okay? Uh, they are not solid, okay? They're filled with these little micro beads, okay? They come in different sizes, okay? I have one on myself just to uh, speed things up a little bit. And so, um, they are great for every single splinting thing. They're ideal for compound fractures. I say they're ideal for that because let's say you got a bone sticking out um, a weird way. Well, you can splint that extremity in that position, still leave that wo uh, wound exposed. Uh, so you can like pack it, monitor it, whatever you have to do um, and keep it in there. That way it's a lot easier to transport the victim, keep that extremity stable, um, try and reduce any additional complications that can happen during the movement process, transportation, and so forth. Um, also, it, as well to my knowledge, is all vacuum splints don't have any kind of metal in there. That way they can easily uh, go through an x-ray machine. Okay, Just in a few different versions that I've seen, I haven't detected any metal. I could be wrong uh, per the version. Uh, but the Kramer version is the most common that I've seen. It usually comes in this red bag right there, okay, which is really easy to identify like on the sidelines. Um, so what happens is you hey, you have said athlete uh, down the field with an injury. Uh, you go, you do your uh, normal um, rapid on the field assessment. Um, if that leg's mangled, you have a dislocation somewhere that you don't need to be, and you deem that the next step is to... Um, Stabilize that extremity and probably most likely transport at this point. Uh, so you would um, send someone grab the bag, splint bag, okay? Comes over, it'd be usually a, a team effort for this. It's really, really difficult to do a vacuum split by yourself um, in a real life situation. It's because you have to stabilize that extremity because it's gonna ha you're gonna have a little bit of motion occurring. And any motion that occurs um, is not gonna feel good to that patient. Uh, especially they would be guarding, uh, they're going to most likely be in shock or will soon be in shock. Uh, so the more healthy you can have, the better without having excessive. Okay, so make sure that you assess the distal circulation, uh, whether that is assessing a pulse, um, a cap refill, however it is best for you, pulse ox. Uh, make sure you, you assess uh, circulate, or, um, sorry, uh, neurologic. Okay, make sure they have some kind of movement, uh, feeling, so forth. Uh, whether it's like on the arm, hey, can you wiggle your fingers? On the feet, can you wiggle your toes? A light brushing, can you feel these um, dermatomes? So forth, okay? That's really important because after you put any splint on, especially the vacuum splint, you need to reassess those to make sure that you did now not lose pulse and you didn't lose any kind of neurologic because uh, that could make sure that could tell you that uh, that splint is put on wrong for whatever reason it's cutting off something the extremity is not in the right spot um, and they're more likely to lose that 
extremity. Okay, so it's really, really important to identify that before and after. Okay, so in tapes of me, okay, we'll dumb scenario, okay, we'll say I'm weightlifting because I'm sitting in my rack right now. Okay, um, my I have a femoral tibial dislocation. Okay, and let's say my wife's in the room, she came out, okay, because she's also an athletic trainer, comes on. Uh, freaks out, calls me an idiot first right off the bat, and then she checks my distal pulse and neurologic, and I have uh, equal pulse, my cap reflex is good, um, I can wiggle my toes, I can still feel my toes, cool. So she grabs a vacuum splint that we, oddly enough, happen to have in our garage, okay, thanks to COVID, and she puts it on, okay, as, um, as easy as she can, okay. So once you get on, she's got to keep, during that application, she's going to keep that, my leg in that same position. She's not going to move it at, at any point, okay? She's not going to try and straighten it. She's not going to try and do any kind of relocation. Yeah, you know, she's going to keep it stable, okay? So in terms of this, okay, I put this on. Let's say I'm in about 34 degrees knee flexion, okay? I throw all these on, okay? So I have this pump right here. So this is a simple pump, okay, hand pump. And there's a valve that you see on the end of each uh, vacuum splint, okay? Also really important to keep those, uh, inspect those often to make sure there's no issues with them. Then if I can prop this up, on the phone, I'm gonna add the tip of this onto there. And I am going to pump vigorously. In whatever position that I found that extremity. From there, I can take this pump off. And now, this once really kind of like flaccid vacuum slit is now rock hard. Okay? And it, and even if I wanted to, I couldn't move my leg. Okay? I can't bend it, I can't extend it. You can see the little. Uh, like pellets in there, okay? Everything is now pretty much vacu vacuumed out, okay? It vacuums out all the air, Ooh, um, which leaves a very, very stable, um, formable splint, okay? So on the Kramer one, which is really nice, so let's say I have a, let me adjust this a little bit. Let me backtrack. Okay, so to add air back in, okay, I would simply on the pump just take this off, okay. Of course, it doesn't come off right now. There we go. I'll put it on the other side, okay, this top part here. Okay. Apply it back on. And immediately air starts to go in. And from here I can pump air back in. Okay. I'm gonna do a little bit. Okay. Okay. So let's say um, I have a dislocation and then my knee is jetting out right through here. Now if I thought in advance, I would have something stick out there, which, let's see if I can grab something real quick. All right. So let's say this is my femur. Okay, it is now sticking out. Okay, I can expose my entire knee. Okay, I can stabilize everything around the side, and then when I go and pump everything back out, okay, given I put air back in there so I, I can maneuver a little bit, so now that is stabilized, okay, I still have access to that dislocated um, femur, as you will, okay, 
which is simulated by um, this rod, okay? And yet everything else is still stable, okay? I still can't really move that extremity at all, okay? And this is uh, one for the lower leg. There's obviously, here's another uh, one of the same size, okay, that I just put on. Uh, this one is an upper body, or it can be a lower body splint, depending on the size of the individual. Um, this one can be used either on the cervical spine, if need be, or on the ankle, or wrist, or whatever uh, you deem accessible. Um, you can use them for whatever instance that you come across. It's good to practice these ahead of time. It's definitely getting more comfortable with them. And I'll follow the different uh, makes and models of them. Um, but yes, yeah, so that is vacuum splints.